Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, this beautiful day. We're going to continue on with polymorphism, inheritance, and pure virtual functions, which is what we're going to do now. And a pure virtual class, basically. Now, what we did last time was polymorphism. Here's a polymorphism example, a, a uh, function that, can, that has the same name, but is overshadowed depending on which subclass is using that function so as we did in the last video and the one before that you, you're gonna have to watch those two actually kind of if, if you don't already get everything but what we did was we made uh, a base class called person and then we inherited from person in student and teacher and we made this function in all of these three and it's, it has the same name but depending on which object uses it it has a different function it uses its get a string, but what happens is that in person we have a name and an age being printed out. In student, the function is the same, except it's printing out the student ID and credits as well, and in teacher the salary. Uh, and the age and the name, of course. Uh, so yeah, that is polymorphism and inheritance, basically. But what is a pure virtual class? Now imagine the scenario where you want to make a class, but you don't want to create objects of that class. You just want to keep it as a kind of a template, and you want to force the user or the programmer uh, to, when when they're creating these uh, these subclasses from this class. For example, if we created student and teacher from person, we want to force student and teacher to do something specific as they're being created. We will use a pure virtual function now what happens is that then you can't create a person object in itself we won't be able to do this person p1 it, it will just be there as a template for student and teacher to inherit name and age and all these functions and stuff but we'll never be able to create a person in itself only student and teacher so what, what do we have to do to make it pure virtual pure virtual all you have to do is actually use this function right here you just do this equals to zero and a class is pure virtual as soon as it has at least one pure virtual function so meaning when this is when this happened this became pure virtual we can't create this object anymore it's called an abstract class so we can't create Bob anymore bye bye Bob peace out have a good life and then person is just a kind of you know thingy here now we don't we can we can define get a string anyway even if it's pure virtual um, it will be called with this functionality uh, if if student and teacher haven't defined them in any other way. but they have to define it basically so what am I blabbering on about this means that as soon as a class inherits from this base class it has to uh, you know define get a string so what happens then? Well, teacher and student have their own get a string, and we can basically, I think you can even remove this, actually. We'll see if this works. I think that might work. I don't even think you have to define the pure virtual. Nope, doesn't look like it. See, Steve called its own, and Eve called uh, her own pure virtual function. So that is a pure virtual function and a abstract class a pure virtual class and it can be really useful for sometimes you don't you want to make for example uh, items in a game you make an item class but you don't actually just make a generic item but you make weapons and you make armors and 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 you know miss like misc items or whatever but you don't actually create one item like a generic item then you can make a pure virtual and you can make sure that they have certain functions when they inherit. Uh, so yeah, I hope you learned something. I hope I wasn't babbling, babbling on too much about this stuff. But uh, I, I can show actually before I go, if I don't have get a string, there's gonna be an issue. We're gonna go in here. We're gonna try to run this, and it's gonna say no. Student cannot initiate abstract class. Instantiate abstract class. That means that we have to have the function there and now it's gonna run boom hell yeah guys and girls I hope you learned something I hope this has been good for you in some way take care keep watching the videos watch the last two videos if you didn't understand everything here 
And yeah, keep learning. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.